Hello, this is Mrs. Molina again, and today our topic is going to focus on the genetic code. Now, you've heard that word code before. Many of you may be in terms of computer coding, and if you know anything about coding with computers, you know that that's basically zeros and ones in different orders, and that tells the computer what to do. Well, similar thing is going to happen with the genetic code, except instead of using zeros and ones, we're going to be using those four letters you already know about, A, T, C, and G. And the order of those is going to determine what proteins the cell makes, which then kind of determines what the cell does. Now, before we move on, basically today's notes is going to focus on some of the vocabulary that you're going to need to understand the whole process that we call protein synthesis, or synthesis means to build, so that means to make a protein. So these notes are going to focus basically on some of the vocabulary you're going to need to understand in order to understand the process. So let's get started over here first. I just want to draw um, a simple molecule of DNA. And if you remember, our backbone is a sugar phosphate, sugar phosphate, sugar phosphate, and let's do one more, sugar and phosphate. Okay. And then if you recall, the sugar bonds to a base, and I'm just going to pick um, A here, let's put C, and then let's put a G, and let's have a T. We'll have all four bases represented. Okay, and then on the other side, remember A always bonds with T, C bonds with G, G bonds with C, T bonds with A. And to have our full side, we need to bond that to a sugar, which bonds to a phosphate. Okay, this bonds to a sugar, which is bonded to that phosphate. And we have another phosphate over here. And sugar, phosphate, and sugar. We can put another phosphate here if we want. We could also add our phosphate up here, okay? So, and I'm going to label this, make sure we know that this is DNA, okay? All right, so let's come back over to this side and let's focus on some of the vocabulary. The first word we need to understand is the word gene. Notice the different spelling. It's not like your blue genes. That would be J-E-A-N-S. This is G-E-N-E. -E. This is a section of DNA that codes for a specific protein. Okay, and you all know me, I like to add some color. So I'm going to underline the word gene here to make it stand out or put a little box around it. And I'm going to emphasize that it codes for a protein. Okay, so just a little bit more about that code. Let's make a note that I'm going to put a little star behind uh, beside it. The order of nitrogen bases. And again, we can remember that's our adenine or A thymine. T, cytosine, C, and guanine, or G. Okay, so the order of these bases um, along the gene forms a genetic code. that specifies, and that means it basically it tells us what type of protein will be produced. Okay, so again, the important part of this is that the order 
of the bases, okay, specifies the protein that's produced. Okay, so the order that these go in, I just picked the order A, C, G, T. This order would determine a specific protein. Of course, it would be many more base pairs long. This is just showing you an example. If I rearrange these and put these letters in a different order, then I'm going to get a different protein. All right, another player in our genetic code that is very important is called RNA. Okay, it's very similar to DNA in that it's, they are both nucleic acids, but instead of having the sugar deoxyribose, we have the sugar ribose since we just have an R instead of the D. Okay, so RNA stands for ribonucleic acid. And basically RNA is what we call a genetic messenger. Okay. It carries the code from the nucleus Um, I'm going to go ahead and say to the ribosome because what you'll learn when we look talk about the process is that um, DNA can't this DNA it can't leave the nucleus it's too big to get out so we have to have this go between called RNA that's going to take the message over to the ribosome because that's where the protein is actually going to be made okay let me go ahead and put a little color around my RNA since that's a new term we need to know. Okay, and it is a messenger. It's gonna go from the nucleus to the ribosome. All right, there's two types of RNA. There is messenger RNA, and we abbreviate that as a little m, lowercase m, capital RNA. And basically what its job is, is to copy, let me put a little star kind of out here so we know, okay. Let me go back and change this, I apologize. Let's say it copies the coded message. spell message right I apologize from DNA to the ribosome okay so let me underline messenger RNA then there's another type of RNA it's called transfer RNA and we put a T lowercase t, capital RNA. And this one's job is to, it carries amino acids to the ribosome. And adds them to a growing protein. Okay. Now we had our drawing of DNA back up here, so I think it'd be important that we um, make a drawing of RNA so we can kind of see uh, what the difference is. Hold on, let me go back and emphasize that we have transfer RNA. So there's two types of RNA, messenger RNA, transfer RNA. There's actually a third called ribosomal RNA that basically makes up the ribosome, um, but we're just gonna kind of ignore that one for now. Um, okay, so I'm gonna, I left a little bit of space over here. I hope you did also. Um, I know we should use that for our Cornell notes, but I'm gonna use this to draw what RNA looks like. So I'm gonna draw an arrow over here. And so the biggest difference, so we still have sugar, 
Okay, instead of being deoxyribose, it's just ribose. We still have our phosphate. Okay, so we still have our sugar and our phosphate backbone. That does not change other than the sugar now is ribose instead of deoxyribose. Now in the cinder, okay, let me go ahead and add one more down here. Okay, before we had A, C, and G, okay, but in RNA, instead of the base thymine, we are going to replace it with a U for uracil, okay? So I'm going to kind of put a a circle around that so that we understand okay, that the base uracil replaces thymine. And I'm going to go ahead and make a note down here. Okay, In RNA, there is no thymine. Instead, We have the base called uracil. Okay. And again, I'm going to emphasize that with some color. Okay. We're also going to look at some other differences here. I'm going to go ahead and need to move to the back side or to a new page. Um, so if you'll join me with that. I'm going to make a quick little chart here that's going to show the differences between DNA and RNA. Okay. So I'm going to have my, I'm going to kind of make a box. All right. And over here, I'm going to have the number of strands. I'm going to have the sugar. I'm going to have the nitrogen bases. Okay. So in this column, we're going to talk about DNA. And over here, we're going to talk about RNA. So I'm going to put a little dividing line here. All right, so DNA, if you noticed, back up here, DNA is two has two strands, this side and this side. But RNA, if you notice, we only drew one side because it is single-stranded. So let's add that to our chart right here. So DNA has two strands. RNA just has one. Okay, and I already mentioned to you that the sugar in DNA, that's where we get the D, is called deoxyribose. But the sugar in RNA is just called ribose. And like I just mentioned to you, the bases in DNA, we know are A, C, G, T. But in RNA, they're A, G, good, get in the same order, C, and not T, but now we have U for uracil. Okay, and that's a big difference there. All right, so that is your basic um, information for the genetic code and some of the words that we'll need. We will use all these words and put it all together in, in the process called protein synthesis that we'll learn more about in another episode. Thank you so much.